in body and spirit for the call to worship. When forces in the world threaten us, when our bodies or spirits turn against us, 
There is one who seeks us. One who needs us. One who heals us. His love washes over us and sets us free for joy. This one is the Lord. Come, let us worship God. So our opening song is a new take on a very familiar song. We've done it a couple times, but it may be a little unfamiliar. So a couple uh, different different directions. If you're feeling like being a little creative this morning, the Kumbaya, it, the tune's a little different. And it starts out um, with, uh, it, there's a lower part and a higher part. So you're welcome to identify with either if you would like to pick up when that comes. But the lower part starts and it goes like this. It goes, Kumbaya. After twice, if you feel like coming in with the higher part, it sounds like this. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. And then we'll go into the verse. So we got that. And the last thing I'll say is when it comes to wind, rain, fire, storm, we're singing wind, rain, fire, storm, kumbaya. There's some really fun hand motions. This is a, a, a youth uh, ministry classic, by the way. So yeah. if you would like to do the hand motions, it goes wind, rain, fire, storm. There you go. <laughs> Amy's got the emphasis there. Yeah. Wind, rain, fire, storm. <laughs> do not direct your storm at your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> So let us sing this song um, together as our opening song of praise to God. Good morning. Grace and peace to all of you. What a wonderful break in hum, hu, I was about to say humility, humidity. <laughs> Hopefully we have no breaks in our, our wonderful humility. No, um, but the wind is beautiful and we're so glad you've come out to join us out on this lawn. Um, despite our replaced pipe, I think we're in pretty good shape and it's wonderful to be in the presence of all of you this last Sunday. 
Um, as always, our prayer cards are available. If you have something you would like to share, they're on the small table in front of the font. At any point, you're welcome to take one, fill a prayer out, and you can drop it in the pe- uh, in a basket when it comes by, and I'll be sure to include it in the prayer when that time comes. I'm not, uh, so thank you for last week and, and making worship continue, and I heard from Kevin that it was a good service, and I'm grateful that he was willing to fill in. I'm not sure if at that uh, if the announcements of that service, if we addressed the blood drive results, but it's certainly worth celebrating. So Jeannie can correct me. I know we're, we're, we're going to go with the higher number, I think, right? So uh, we had about 25 pints out of a goal of 18. So we exceeded our goal for the blood drive, which is great and wonderful. And we had a great turnout for giving and volunteering from you all from, the, from OPC, which is another wonderful blessing. So many thanks to all those who came and volunteered to help at the desk and to give. And Jeannie, of course, is always for her, her tireless work with it. So it's a wonderful ministry that we are able to continue. We do have a town hall briefly after worship in um, the chapel. I, I probably will check location. It is nice up here, but if we find, find that we need to go inside, we do have that available. Um, it's a review of the small group conversations and some conversation around um, what our next steps can be. So we would love for you to join briefly after some time of, of refreshments for a brief town hall if you are able to join for that. We had our first Theology on Tap Thursday at Hobnob, and it was great. So if you're on the fence about coming, I hope you'll consider joining. Um, it's a new location, but the conversation um, continues through um, Shirley Guthrie's Christian Doctrine. So they've been fun conversations and good laid-back times. So if you're able to join us this coming Thursday, we will be continuing that. I will uh, not be with you all ne- this next Sunday, um, but uh, Nick is going to be offering his gifts as a musical sermon once again. So lots of great music. And um, I believe that we will be in the chapel at that point. So stay tuned for official word on that. But I believe that's our plan is to be back in the chapel um, a little earlier than when we had said with July. Um, but do stay tuned and we'll make sure that can happen. So thank you to Nick for that and others who have shared, continue to share their musical gifts. Uh, one exciting thing coming up in July, we are going to be returning our um, intergenerational VBS Sundays, which is a little different this year as it always is every year. So uh, they will include this discussion style sermons for three weeks and the serve team is helping host these and we'll be focusing in on discerning our mission partnerships and new ways God may be calling us to lead the community. The serve team had a great idea to use worship as a venue for that conversation. So it will be reflections on scripture and texts in a way that can hopefully lead us in a deeper discernment of what we have to give our community. And it will conclude with another hygiene kit preparation day for Mercy Community Church, which have always gone well and been a lot of fun. So that will be July 24th. Look out for the sign up. We will be collecting items for that. If you are able to purchase some hygiene kits for Mercy Church, we'll have that this week, the sign up. So that's a good way for us to organize that ahead of time. So look out for that. And July 24th after worship is the day we're going to be assembling those. So um, we would love for you to be part of that. Um, if you did not hear the, wor- the word, um, starting mid-August, we have a director of youth ministry, Grace Kane, who many of y'all are familiar with. Um, this is in part due to a grant from the Presbytery that we were able to get, which we were very excited about. And as you know, our children are growing up before our very eyes. So um, Grace will be there to be able to nurture them and to, to care for them and to be part of hopefully building a, a, a youth program here at the church. So we're looking forward to having her with us come August. I think those might be all the announcements, unless I'm missing any. Friends, it's a beautiful day. We are in the presence of God at all times, but certainly when we are gathered together and we are gathered together in this environment. So let us unite our hearts and minds as we worship God today. We begin by acknowledging who we are as God's children, as those created in the image of God, yet those who have failed to live up to the image of God as we have been created. We have fallen short. We fall short daily. We are separate and apart from our original created being. Yet as we gather, as we seek God's forgiveness, as we seek a better way to live more in line with who God is calling us to be, we find that God meets us on that road, on that path to hear us, to welcome us, and to help us live into our calling. So we gather to confess together and in the silence of our hearts, knowing that we serve a God who forgives. 
So friends, let us join together in a prayer of confession. Holy One, God Most High, grant us faith to confess our sins and seek your mercy. There are barren places in our lives where we have wandered far from you. We have listened to voices who distracted us from your call. We have submitted to powers competing for our loyalty to you. God, our Savior, forgive us. Quench our thirst for you from the rock of our salvation. And let your love well up in us into eternal life. Let us enter into your kingdom, then send us out to serve you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Friends, hear the good news. It is only God who is in a position to condemn, yet our God is a God of mercy and forgiveness. So despite all we have done and not done, through Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven and set free. Thanks be to God. And now let us share a bit of the peace that Christ gives us with that forgiveness and the passing of peace. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. snow fall from heaven, your word now falls upon us. May it produce good seed in us, becoming bread for a hungry world. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may your word never return to you empty. In us, even in us, may your word accomplish your purpose. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Our first reading this morning is on this other page. <laughs> it is from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Second reading today comes from the book of First Kings, nineteen nine through fifteen. Let us watch and listen again for God's word among us today. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, 
thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. I do have a fun young disciples game. We think we have some willing participants and perhaps uh, grandparent participants. Whoever's up for it. Are y'all up for coming coming up here for something fun? Okay. Here, we'll just hang out up here. Good morning. Remind me your names. This is Kate and Kate. Ann Parks. And Ann Parks. Uh-uh. Kate and Ann Parks. Good to see y'all. And you, you're... Eleanor, gotcha. Right. <laughs> and Eleanor. So, um, ha- have have we ever tried looking for God? Not so easy, is it? Right. God's not out and about. Elijah was having a hard time as a as a, a, a prophet of God. We've y'all have had hard times, right? Some things can just be hard to do, and he felt he was all alone and doing what God called him to do. And God wanted to, to teach him a lesson in the midst of disappointment, and so. He had to go look for where God was. And if you, if you heard the story, there was a lot of things happening. Did you hear all these things that were happening first? There was this windstorm that blew through, and there was an earthquake, and then there was a great fire, and God wasn't in any of those things until it got quiet. And then he heard and found where God was. So in that spirit, I thought I'd have a little fun, and we're going to play a little skit where one of you can be the voice of God and one of you can be Elijah who can find God. And Elijah, so, um, and maybe maybe Eleanor can help if she wants. So the way this works is one of you uh, can, will stand a little further out and the other one of you can wear this blindfold. And then, um, let's see, sorry, names again. Ann Parks. Ann Parks and Kate. And Kate. Ann Parks and Kate. Okay, so one of you will call the name of the other quietly and out here, you all have a role too. Y'all are gonna be all the elements, okay? So you can make wind sounds, you can make some earthquake noises, fire noises, and the one who has the blindfold, you have to, you have to, you have to listen for the the voice and go find them. You are you up for a game? Who wants to wear the blindfold? Who wants to, to call? To... <laughs> like a, a good sibling. Okay. I'll do it with you. All right. Okay. So Kate's doing the blind. Oh, they're they're doing. Okay. You don't want to do it. Okay. Kate's, Kate's got it. Blindfold? All right, Ann Parks, can you do you... <laughs> How about Fran does the blindfold? Oh, there we go, Eleanor. Okay. Okay. All right, so you two get to work together, and you can, you're going to have to call, what do you want to call it? Gran, is that what you call yeah, her? Grand. Okay, so you're going to call Gran's name, but not too quietly. You just have to say it kind of, kind of quietly. All right, come over here. We're going to be over here. The voice of God is, we'll try to avoid all this part. Okay. I'll help you, Eleanor. Don't Thank worry. Thank you. I'm sorry, Grant. I'll help you, Grant. All right. So stand here. All right. Let's practice. Grant. Call her name. She has to be able to hear you. Can you say Grant? Good. Okay. All right. Everyone practice. Give me a wind sound. Good. Okay. Give me some earthquake noises. Feet doesn't do much. Good. That's good. We got a lot of noise. And fire. Got some fire sounds. All right, we got all this stuff, Eleanor, and you have to hear the voice of God, okay? 
All right. All right. I want you to. Okay. Let's walk over here where there's grass, so you don't okay. trip on the on the elements. Thank you. Okay. All right. And now we're gonna spin. Now the part I didn't say. We're gonna spin you around three times. All right, ready? One, two, three. Okay. Good. Good. I got you. All right, Fran. The still small voice of God is calling your name, but there's a lot of noise going on. All right, can you listen for your I'm listen for your name? It. God is calling your I'm name. All right, here she comes. I'm Keep calling, still it. small voice. It. Very quiet storm. Off goes the blindfold. Yeah. Yay, you found them. Great job, y'all. Give them a hand. They did a good job. Okay, we're not quite done yet. So, you know, what What I think this story is telling us is when all these things are, when we feel disappointed or when all this noise is going on, God, maybe that still small voice, and sometimes it might mean quieting down and listening up for where God might be places that are unexpected. So I'm reminded sometimes when I'm feeling kind of down or I'm feeling frustrated or disappointed, maybe sometimes I just need to be quiet and listen for God's voice that can be a very small, call, grand, call, well, they won't, it won't be calling me grand, but yes. whatever God's voice is, is there. That's right. So maybe that means taking time to pray or spending time with someone we haven't talked to in a while or serving somewhere we haven't done before, just doing something different to pay attention for where God is speaking. So can we pray together? All right, let's join together. Dear God, you come to us in a small voice. Help us to listen. Help us to pay attention. Help us to hear you. Amen. All right, give him another hand. Thank you yeah, so much. Right.
Thank you, Ellen, Elizabeth, Nick. Very lovely. Let us approach God in prayer once again. Loving God, who often comes to us in that still, small voice, may you silence those other voices that it may be your own that we hear and see and follow as we trust and listen to your spirit today. Amen. Now, I'm not one to generalize people into major categories, but I've discovered over time folks tend to land on a spectrum between being cooks and bakers. Unless you're, you know, someone like Mary Smith, and you're probably very good at both, right? But there's those who thrive living on chaos, right? That'd be me on a stovetop or a grill, mixing spices, changing heat and other elements at a whim. And then there's those who like following that recipe with exact measurements, gently placing that pan in the oven, the exact time period for that baked item to come out just right. You know, when it seems like a recipe is followed exactly the way it is written, or when your improvisation skills are top notch, still seems every now and then things tend to go wrong sometimes, somehow or another, in unexplainable ways. And such seems to have been the case for Elijah. He had been God's number one prophet to the northern kingdom, the voice of God's favor upon the oppressed, the thorn in the side of Ahab and Jezebel. He had won victories over Baal, Baal's prophets and worshipers, claiming territory in the name of the one God of the Israelites. Yet at the top of his game, as threats were mounting upon his life, he decided that God's recipe for success was not baking the cake he expected. Feeling alone and dejected, a failure, he retreated to a cave. Whether we are cooks or bakers, certainly we have these moments of feeling that our study, our work, our emotional labor has been in vain, and we retreat to any number of places, dark caves in our home, perhaps sometimes into bad habits or destructive behaviors, perhaps simply retreating deep inside ourselves, imprisoned by that disappointment and despair. Recipes not yielding the result we expected, time to order delivery and call it a day. What do we do with our disappointment and failed expectations? A mentor of mine often asks me, where are you carrying it physically? Certainly a worthy question for all of us. Where in our body do we feel these things, letdowns and struggles against insurmountable barriers? An awareness of how we carry such things may shed light on what we do with them, fight or flight, retreat or engagement. We certainly carry a lot of weight from all directions and Perhaps it's okay just to retreat sometimes. Doing so, huddled in his cave, Elijah suddenly heard the voice of God. What are you doing here, Elijah? The question can be asked a number of ways, right? Elijah began to unload his burden before God, holding nothing back. Everyone is out to get me. Nothing is working. I'm alone. I've got nothing left. In, res in response, Elijah was simply told to pay attention as God was about to pass by. Suddenly, we may be familiar with the story that great wind blows through the mountains, cracking rocks along the way. That's some pretty strong wind. Followed by a great earthquake shaking the very foundations, and finally that great fire, the conflagration consuming anything in its path, smoke billowing up into the sky, and in all of these crazy occasions, Elijah could not find the presence of God. Now, perhaps when you hear this story, your thought may be like mine. These are some pretty terrible natural occurrences. Perhaps you've lived through any one of these disaster-level events. I can't imagine facing all of them back to back to back. Why would Elijah be looking for God in such things anyway? 
should he be taking cover or evacuating in the presence of these events taking place? Oftentimes this passage is interpreted as Elijah's quest for the presence of God in nature, similar to how we might go on a hike in the mountains, stand at the beach tied to admire God's handiwork. When silence finally falls in the midst of all that chaos, we may interpret it as God being found on that quiet mountaintop after all that work. God in the calm sunset at the break of day, in the first cup of coffee on the front porch, crickets and fireflies as night falls. Yet such things, while certainly wonderful and very capable of carrying a sense of the divine, are not exactly the point of this story. The point is not that God was found specifically in a quiet, serene, natural location, but that God was found in the least expected place. It was the one that captured Elijah's attention when he finally started listening and emerged out of that cave. The sound of silence also interpreted as a small murmur, that small voice. Not just something quiet, something different. Something that caused him to pay attention and listen and emerge from his place of disappointment and despair. Once his attention was caught, God asked him once again, What are you doing here, Elijah? Imagine the tone changes at that point, from rhetorical to direct. When God repeats a question, by the way, you know it's serious. Elijah once again gave that same lament, yet perhaps this time it was a little more toned down as he was processing all that occurred, perhaps a little less angry and full of anxiety. And when he was done talking, perhaps he said, you know, you're right. What am I doing here? God's response was simple. Go. Then go. Get back to where you are meant to go, who you are meant to be. Get back to work. Perhaps we've felt that question. What are we doing here? Perhaps God's been asking that of us, and it's possible we've not always been able to hear it because we've been trying to find God too hard on our own in the wind and the earthquake and the fire and the, the things that we expect. Yet in our disappointment, we seek solace and answers in the wrong places at times. Perhaps we try so hard by our own merits, we forget sometimes the importance of being able to stop and to listen, to pray, to pay attention in the places where God may find us unexpectedly, often requiring a change of behavior or action. Perhaps we need to pay attention to where we are carrying things in our body and begin to breathe, to let go, that when God passes by, we may notice. As you all know, we'll soon be gathering after this service for those who are able to continue conversations on the time we're in and from these small group conversations. We, like many, most, if not all churches, are discerning our emergence from these pandemic times, seeking God's direction and guidance for how we can respond to guiding or to rising challenges. As we search in the wind and the quake and the fire, as we try to make that perfect dish out of the recipe and the ingredients we have, God simply asks, what are you doing here? Not to question the good work that's been done, not to question plans that have been put in place or the gifts that we have, but rather to invite us to remember through all of it who we are, whose we are. To remind us that sometimes our job's to stop and pray and listen. To know that God is seeking us in the silence in unexpected places. In the midst of our searching for whatever it may be, in disappointment, perhaps God's invitation 
is to a different way of being. To seek out what gives the most life, what gives the most sense of belonging, what gives the most love to share. Perhaps we can reframe God's question, what are you doing here, into a question asked by beloved poet Mary Oliver that many are likely familiar with. What is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I'll conclude by reading her poem in full as an invitation to pay attention to God's movement in the world. Even when results don't turn out as we hoped, even when plans don't seem to yield results, when anxiety can take over, Oliver's poem reminds us that there's beauty to be found when we can sit back and wonder and listen for God's presence in unexpected places. As Elijah was inspired and encouraged to simply being the prophet he was called to be, may we too be encouraged to simply be the church God is calling it to be for whomever needs it most. Oliver's poem is as follows. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what prayer is. I do know how to pay attention. How to fall down in the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Elijah may have felt all alone in that cave, in his calling, when in truth he was part of something much greater than himself than he could conceive of. May we too be reminded of the very same thing as we pay attention to our own wild and precious lives. The joy within our hearts and within our community that compels us outward and onward. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now invite us to a time of reflection and offering. If you're able to give, the offering plates will come around. You can leave a prayer card in there if you wish. If you wish to use this time to listen for the silent voice, the quiet voice of God, how you are being called to live into something new this week and beyond, you are also invited to do so as well. Friends, let us turn towards this time of offering.
God of every gift, we are grateful for this opportunity we have share to receive these gifts. May they be in the service of your kingdom. May we be in the service of your kingdom, listening for your command and your calling and serving you in this world in need. Amen. with those on our prayer list and all that we bring with us here this day, let us approach God who hears us in prayer. God of all things, who speaks in a still, small voice, in sheer silence, and low murmurs, in unexpected places, Speak to us now. times of disappointment and struggle, in our times of joy and success, in our times of grief and pain, in our times of waiting and anticipation, in our times of searching and hoping. Be our comfort, our guide, our inspiration and renewal. In the silence where you, at times, are found, we lift up the prayers from places that are loud and boisterous. Bring peace where there is war and strife, and Ukraine and elsewhere in the world. Support all those affected by such things, and speed those with the power to make change to do so as you keep your children safe. Lord, we lift up 
the prayers as we commemorate Juneteenth, as our country acknowledges the end of slavery. May it be both a joyful celebration, yet also a reminder of the long road ahead that lies for true justice and equality to take place. Lord, we give thanks for fathers and those who have been a fathering presence to us throughout our lives on this day. May they be, may they be celebration and joy for all that surrounds it. Lord, we also pray for those who struggle, those who have lost fathers, those with challenging relationships. May you be present through it all. We give thanks for the way you continue to be a loving parent to us in the midst of all we face, providing and loving unconditionally. Lord, this week we pray for our denomination, Presbyterian Church USA, as they gather for General Assembly. Speak to delegates who gather with that still, small voice that your will may be heard and sought in all things. Remind us of our church's connection to the greater church, the ways that your spirit is moving in us and beyond us. Lord, we pray for our church as we continue to seek whom you are calling us to be. Help us to pay attention, to listen to your still small voice as we continue loving one another and the community around us. In all these things, may Jesus Christ be our guide. May the Spirit be our inspiration. As we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, we will continue to carry much disappointment and despair, the weight of expectations, many things that fall upon us. And through it all, may we be reminded that we do not carry such things alone. May we be reminded that God is there in unexpected places and sometimes stopping to listen, to pay attention, to pray. It's where we find God's voice calling us and inviting us into new way of being. And then when God summons us to go and do and be the church, we will do so inspired and strengthened by the way the Spirit is moving through and with us. And as it does, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields and friends. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Go now in the name of the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Thank you.